Hello, and welcome to another episode of Virtual City Hall School. Today's guest is a really popular one, not only because of all the information that he has to have, but also because of the special guests he brings. You see, when Peter's in the classroom at City Hall School, he often has a tarantula on his head. Peter is from the pest management team, and we're really glad he's joining us today. Hi, Peter. Hi. Thanks for having me here. I'm glad you could be here. And I'll turn the, the interview over to our student reporter, Kylan. Hi, so my first question is, what is a typical day like for you and your team? Well, we have a lot of jobs that we take care of. See, our lab is sort of the eyes and ears for the city's trees, as well as helping to monitor the mosquito populations around town and doing public education. Uh, so we'll often be out uh, looking for mosquitoes, especially after it rains, to see if we can find spots where they're developing to help direct the mosquito abatement program. So the guys that will go out and do spraying for mosquitoes, we tell them that, yes, there's lots of mosquitoes over here. We found lots of standing water where they can develop. Um, and looking out in trees for various insect pests, including invasive pests. So that means insects that have been introduced here that aren't native to here and don't belong and can cause problems outside of their native environment. So generally, a lot of us are driving around looking for bugs and changing out various types of traps that we use to collect them. Cool. That's really interesting. Um, what do you like most about your work? I like the chance to be out and about in nature and knowing that I'm making a difference to help protect uh, the trees in the city and also the people. Now, admittedly, we don't have a lot of insects around here that can really hurt people, but everyone appreciates not having mosquitoes bothering them when they're out having a picnic. And the trees in the city are very, very important to public health. Um, Trees improve air quality and people's overall quality of life more than you might think. And so making a difference with the trees makes a big difference with uh, everyone's appreciation of being outdoors. But uh, more than just feeling useful, I like the chance to just be out in nature and poking around. And honestly, getting paid to catch bugs is pretty awesome as far as I'm concerned. That's really cool. Um, I like that answer. <laughs> What do you say to people who think insects and spiders are, are pests or scary? Well, unfortunately, that kind of thing comes up a lot because in our culture, we're kind of brainwashed from the time that we're babies to think that these things are gross. And it's unfortunate because insects and spiders are very, very important. Now, People like to think that we run the world, and in many ways we do. But if you got rid of all of the people on the planet, like if we just all moved to Mars tomorrow, just about all the other animals and all the other ecosystems on the planet would do just fine, aside from domestic animals. Um, but you know what? If you got rid of all the insects, um, pretty much all terrestrial ecosystems would collapse entirely. Um, insects play a huge role in global ecosystems. Did you know that if you took all of the vertebrates in the world, uh, so all of the people and all of the dogs and whales and birds and fish um, and stack them on one side of scale and put just ants on the other side, uh, scientists think that the ants would be about five to 10 times heavier than all of the vertebrates put together. Uh, so, yeah, we have a bit of an inflative opinion of ourselves, but uh, insects, they really run the world as far as I'm concerned, and we should respect that. I never ask anyone to have, you have to like insects because it's hard to get over those kind of feelings when you've had them ingrained into you from the time you were little, but recognize that they're really, really important and we depend on them for the world to keep running, essentially. Okay, um, what does the city of Edmonton, uh, how does the city of Edmonton work to control mosquitoes? Well, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, my lab um, 
various other coworkers of mine, we go out to monitor uh, mosquito development in temporary water. See, mosquitoes, to avoid predators, they breed in temporary bodies of water. So essentially just like puddles out in fields. In some cases, they can go from egg to adult in six days under ideal conditions. So they don't need a whole lot of time. And if they were to breed in big ponds, then they'd have all sorts of other things that could eat them. So we drive around uh, after rainfalls uh, to see if we can find new mosquito hatch, essentially where baby mosquitoes are hatching, and then collect all of this information on apps on our phones that allow us to get exact GPS coordinates and say, yes, we found this many mosquitoes per scoop of water here. And then the pest operations crews go around with uh, pesticides to target mosquitoes specifically and try and go after all of those particular temporary pools. Uh, and the pesticides that they use will only target aquatic fly larvae. So they have uh, no real effect on the rest of the animals in the ecosystem. So it's very, very safe. And in the event that we don't find enough mosquitoes, then the pest operations crews don't go out and spray. They don't do it just because there has to be a certain threshold of mosquitoes that they that are met before they'll go out and do the work. Nice. Okay. Um, are there certain diseases that our trees can get from insects? Yes, actually. There's a fair number that can be spread by insects and some of the one, worst ones we have to worry about are ones that are from invasive insects so like i said earlier those are insects that don't belong here uh, one of the most notable ones is dutch elm disease so there isn't an elm called the dutch elm but the disease is dutch so what happens is they're little beetles that can fly around and spread this fungus and the fungus is what causes dutch elm disease Underneath the tree's bark, there's a living layer that transports water and nutrients up and down through the tree's trunk and through the branches. And this fungus, if it gets in the tree, will sort of fill all of that up and, and choke off the transport of the water and nutrients and kills the tree fairly quickly. And there isn't any cure for it, unfortunately. The only thing you can do is chop the tree down and make sure that it's properly disposed of so the disease can't spread. Edmonton has the largest stand of elm trees in the entire world that is uninfected with Dutch elm disease. And about a third of the boulevard trees in Edmonton are elm trees. So we have a lot of trees that we need to protect here from Dutch elm disease. Now, we haven't found Dutch elm disease in Edmonton yet, thankfully, but the beetles that can spread them are here. And so our lab puts out various traps to look for the beetles so that we know where there's concentrations of them. Um, so in, uh, yeah, we'll go out, look for the beetles. And when we find uh, there's a fair number in this neighborhood, then we can go look to see if there's sick elm trees that need attending to. Awesome. Well, thank you. Those are great questions and interesting answers to mm -hmm. learn about the pest management team. So my challenge for you today, the students that are watching, is to get outside and explore and look for some of these urban critters. Maybe you'll look under a rock or on a sidewalk or in a garden. Instead of being a bird watcher, be a bug watcher today. And if you decide to catch a bug and look at it for a while in a jar or something like that, that's fine. It could be quite interesting, but make sure you do let it go. Maybe you mm -hmm. wanna catch some of the bugs on, in your journals by writing about what you see or drawing what you see. Maybe your exploration and your curiosity will lead you to become an entomologist and you'll want to learn more about their life cycles and habitats. Thanks for watching. Bye, Peter. Bye. Thanks for having me.